first line they said was, we ignored your advice though. <laughs> so I said, good. Today I'm on my way to see a business that is in the education sector, higher education, and they have developed a distance learning course, online learning, for a very creative topic which I won't tell you because that would identify them. However, I was in at the start of those conversations about two and a half years ago, about the concept, the strategy, how to project manage the creation of that type of thing and got to the point where I finished my work and said goodbye and next thing I hear I did it all so the website is online why I'm going back is I sent them an email saying you know I've not heard from you for a while how's it going and they said come and see us we need to recruit a certain number of people onto the course paid course by October and we'd like to talk to you about how you can help us with marketing. Okay, I've just left the education company and I turn up and there are two owners, uh, their marketing manager and their business development manager. Normally you know who's going to be there when you turn up, which is fine. And the first thing they said to me was, it's good to see you again. We saw you four years ago when it was just a concept. We built an online course. There are candidates on the online course. Yeah, the pilot is, is successful. And the first line they said was, we ignored your advice though. <laughs> so I said, good. <laughs> that was probably a good idea. And I said, what do you mean? And four years ago, we were talking about branding and we had a big debate about what to call this thing and what to make it look like and all this kind of stuff. And I said, I think you should align it with your existing company, offline learning, you know, course learning in person. So I would do that because if you launch a brand new name and look, and you don't link it to all the hard work you've done for the past 10 years, all the thousands of people who've used your your business brand experienced, you know, we're talking about branding, right? Experienced your quality, I hate that word, experienced your sincerity, how's that? Authenticity and value that you can deliver, not quality. I hate that word, it means nothing. You know, we will align with that because then I don't have to sell branding. And what I mean by that is just making the case before they ignored me. <laughs> on why they ignored me. I said, to me, sales and marketing, specifically sales, a third of that effort, a third of what I say, a third of the time, a third of the money is invested. If I don't have a track record, every startup will know this. That's the hardest time to sell anything, your first one. If I don't have a track record, I have to invest a third of my effort persuading you I'm even credible, that I can even deliver what I promise. And the truth is, before you have customers and vouch for scenarios and time on your side, I mean, these are silly things, aren't they? Time, you know, track record really doesn't mean much, but years of service and things like that. Before you have those things, you are literally, when you start up, asking someone to take a leap of faith, a leap of faith, literally. They don't know you're going to deliver it. You think you are because you said the right things, but it's still a leap of faith. Why would you do that if you've got 10 years of trading? Better to have 10 years of trading, use the old branding, align it, make it look similar and say, I don't need to spend half my time persuading you we're credible because look, for 10 years we've been credible in a similar market. Let's not even talk about it. You know I'm credible. No, let's spend all the time talking about the value so that was my opinion then, and they ignored me, which is fine. And I think they were right to, because it was a pilot. If I'd walked in today and they'd said, the pilot is actually the real brand. If I'd walked in today and they'd said, 
we are going to use the pilot branding for the entire business. And they asked me the question, which they did today is, what do you think? Then I would have said, I don't agree because my job's not to agree with everyone. My job's to have an opinion, share it, make people think about their opinions and, uh, and challenge things. So if they said to me today, that's going to be the branding, we're not going to associate it with our 10 years of past service. Out of fear, really. They don't want to infect their core branding, which I understand. Then I would have said the same. I'd have said, no, I think that's a bad idea. And I turned to the marketing manager, who obviously was responsible for making this a success as her job, and said, you need to push hard to make sure that when they do decide the business brand, it's aligned with the old company the existing core company, the one with 10 years of reputation and status, because your job's going to be a hundred times harder if you're selling a brand new online brand. Missed opportunity, I think. Um, they have to change the branding. I don't know if they were going to, but they have to because they received a cease and desist letter, an intellectual property letter saying that pilot brand is too close to ours. Change it. And so, you know, that was the opening discussion. We have to change our brand. What do you think? Should we keep it now or should we do the association with the old company? I said, association with the old company. But I understand why they did know, because the pilot could have gone wrong. Hide the pilot. That's, that's why this was the correct decision to ignore me. Hide the pilot. Keep it off radar. Don't infect your core brand. So, yeah. But that got me on to the next bit, which is, well, if we haven't decided the branding, what you're asking me to talk about, which is marketing, is going to be extremely challenging because you would do your branding based on who your target market is. And after an hour of talking, I don't know who that is because because you've got such an innovative, attractive product. I don't know who your target market is because you keep telling me different ones. I can sell to 50 to 60 year olds. I can sell to 18 to 24 year olds. I can sell to people in industry. I can sell people in military. You know, I'm thinking, well, who is it? I could sell to everyone, but that's not marketing. And I said, I said to, you know, one of the guys I said, you could sell to everyone, but what you're talking about there is talking, not marketing. Marketing is deciding who not to talk to. It's looking at your entire customer base and I drew a pyramid, right? Which is what I always do when I try and explain segmentation. I drew a pyramid and said, put all your people in there. And 20% of these people on the bottom will be what I'll call low propensity to purchase. By that, I mean they are high maintenance, high effort, low return customers. Still customers, but, you know, hard to get, hard to persuade. Here you are, it's the persuasion pyramid, right? The people at the bottom are hard to persuade and I don't get much back. They get lip service as a contact strategy in terms of marketing. They get lip service. They get emails. That's it. Right? Because that don't cost me anything and it's automated. Then you've got this middle 60% in the pyramid right? who actually are okay. They are potentially high value customers, potentially. But they're still not what I'll call hanging fruit. They're still not prime targets who will respond to what we say as a brand and a business and embrace our messages. They still need to be persuaded. Well, they're okay. They might get phone calls, <laughs> right? So they'll get more communication, but they're not getting our best. And our best are the people who I met today, the marketing manager, the business development manager, people who are human beings who come to work for eight, nine, ten hours a day and have a finite opportunity to influence marketing strategy, marketing performance. I said, those 20%, that's who we go after with a vengeance. That's who we are relentless in persuading because they will sign up in greater numbers and faster. That's a marketing strategy, right? Which is, I segment everybody I could sell and decide that actually I'm not going to sell to you guys. I'll communicate with you and sell lightly. I want to know who the top 20% are. What do they look like? What do they feel like? And what do they think? And when I decide that, then I'll come up with a brand. I said, who are they? Because today I can't hear you saying which is which. And I think the truth is, no one had decided. 
Well, once again, I cannot move on to the next level, which is communication strategy, communication plan, without knowing your segmentation. I need to know who the prime target market are, what they look like, what they think, what they want, who respond to the product we've created. It's kind of, is it back to front? Not really, because they know their customer base because they did it offline. But, you know, you find a market, create a product. Right? At that point, I then need to decide who I'm not going to speak to segmentation and at that point I then go through all the marketing channels communication channels create content that suits what they want what an 18 to 26 year old wants is very different from a 50 to 60 year old typically I find you know and they're on different things 18 to 24 sort of vine social media you know vine seven second rotational videos 50 to 60 Facebook probably and they want different things so how I left it with them was I am happy to give you an opinion on anything, as always. It's my job. I'll come in only if I can work with the marketing manager and business development person, and we all decide a strategy to take it to market based on segmentation and exploiting channels where they sit. That's it.